the longer this thing plays out with Brandon, do you have to do anything in camp to kind of adjust for, to the possibility or likelihood that he won't be with the team? Um, I, mean, I think, like I said at the beginning of camp, like, you know, I've kind of planned for everything, you know, not knowing it could go any direction. Uh, so we've been doing the same stuff. If that continues, we'll keep doing what we planned on. And, um, you know, the hardest thing is just not have as much wideouts out there. Uh, so we got to make sure we get through that with some of the injuries and stuff. But, um, no, nothing's changing right now. Do you or need this to be resolved pretty soon? Um, no, I mean, you always want it to be um, badly. Um, but uh, this stuff does take time. And, you know, every day I hope it gets resolved. Um, but I have no timetable on it. Like, it didn't surprise me coming into this. Um, going about coaching our team, getting them ready for week one, and uh, hopefully it'll get resolved though sooner than later. Is he here today? Uh, yes. Normal stuff. Yeah. 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 Is there a scenario where you do a long-term deal with him? Uh, there's, a, there's a scenario for everything, uh, so I want to rule anything out. Would this team be better in, if you traded Brandon? Are you, could you see a scenario where you're better because of that? I mean, Brandon's a great player, uh, so it's real hard to, um, to be better when you lose a great player. Um, so we got to look into anything. We got to understand the situation we're in, what that looks like, um, and that does take time. So hopefully it'll all work out best for him and best for us in the long run. Do, do, do he has the permission to talk to other teams. Is, is that correct? Uh, yes. Is there a disappointment it's reached this point? I know it could be resolved. But uh, I mean, it's been it's been at this point for a little bit, so it's. Um, no, nothing really new to me. I mean, you're always disappointed when you can't keep a hold of all your players or it's not going exactly right. Um, I mean, I don't like losing anybody. Uh, so that's why I'm hoping it does work out here. Um, but right now, we don't have that solved yet. So I hope it does. Is the offer you guys made in May a final offer, or is there a chance you... I mean, I'm not getting any specifics with offers, contracts, trades, anything like that. But what I can tell you guys is nothing has changed. I know a lot was out yesterday and stuff, but from the situation that we're in with Brandon, um, nothing's changed. Uh, a veteran receiver walked off the street into this offense. How long would it take that player to get up to speed and be ready to roll? Two and a half days. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, it depends who it is. You know, it depends the situation, um, experience of the offense, where he's at in his career. Um, so I got no absolutes for you. This deal took a while last year. Obviously, we know all the way to the right. Why is this one different? Um, not going to get into that. I mean, there's every, each one's different, and um, I'm not going to compare Bosa's to Brandon's. What's your current comfortability level with the wide receivers that you have? Obviously, Debo's there. You have Jennings there and stuff. But with the younger guys, where, where's your comfortability level with them right now? I love the guys that we have in the building. I love the vets that we've had here that have played at a high level. I love the new ones we brought in for competition, and I love the young guys. Um, you know, they have been banged up, trying to get healthy, you know, battle on a shoulder, battle on a hamstring. Um, but when they're out there, they're getting better. And uh, hope, I hope that they can get healthy, continue to stay healthy so they can get the time in that they need to be ready. Uh, I know they will be if they get that time in, but that's the risky and hard thing about football. Um, football is a tough thing to practice, tough thing to get prepared for. And you got to do that at a very high level. And uh, you hope they have no setbacks as they go along. And if they don't, uh, I feel very good about the guys because they got what it takes. From a coach's perspective, is it potentially detrimental to the team to keep Ayuk here if he's unhappy and doesn't have an extension? I mean, everything can be. I mean, totally. It's We're trying to figure out what the situations are. They're always moving. I don't know what the best one will be. Um, but yeah, there's, there's pluses and minuses to every situation. Does Brandon talk to you a lot about this, or is this, are you keeping that? Separate? No, it's, I think we did at the beginning, and but we've kept um, we haven't been talking about it much with each other, and most of that goes through his agent and John. Uh, what's Christian Caffrey's status right now? Christian has a calf strain. Um, did a couple of days ago. Um, it's all right. You know, he didn't pull it or anything, but uh, you guys probably won't see him this preseason. You guys brought in Matt Breida, and we haven't seen Elijah Mitchell lately. What's Mitchell's status? Matt, ha um, Elijah has a strained hamstring too. Didn't pull it, but we're going to be safe with him, so he's going to miss probably a week or so. Um, so we had to bring Matt in, which was awesome to have Matt available. Um, we needed some numbers out there and to be able to get a, a legit player who's had a hell of a career who's been here before, too. I uh, felt pretty fortunate. Uh, are you in communication with Trent Williams at all? And, and do you know what he's doing right now? Uh, I don't know what he's doing. I believe he's in Houston. I know that's where he lives in the off season, But I'm confident Trent's working out, getting ready and stuff. And um, hopefully that'll be resolved as fast as possible, too. Christian to miss practice? What's that? How long do you expect Christian to be out of practice? Uh, probably a couple of weeks. 
Um, I'm not sure. I haven't even discussed that. Uh, yeah, he tweaked his shoulder, something that he did in OTAs. I don't know if it's too serious, but that's why we removed him halfway through practice. Role players are huge on our team and in every team because I mean, it's I mean, it's always next man up, and you can lose a guy at any time. And um, if you don't have a guy who can come in and do that job, that's some important positions. I mean, uh, that can take the whole team down. So um, it's not just Jalen, but you know, guys who back up George, guys who back up our wideouts, our quarterback. Uh, you guys have seen it over the years. Um, you keep your fingers crossed, but uh, you're always going to lose some real good players, and usually your season depends on how good those backups are. Jordan Mason was, was tells that when he when he first came in, that he didn't connect right away with Bobby Turner, and that he didn't really know. He found out later he didn't really know how to be a pro. But is that unusual for a, an undrafted free agent to come in and not connect? But you guys still see enough in him to hang on to. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think. It's just it's relationships with everyone, whether you're young or older. Or, I mean, it takes time to get to know people and really what makes them tick. And I mean, Bobby's going to be Bobby regardless. He has a coaching style to himself and that is very successful. He has a standard and um, he demands a lot out of people. And um, sometimes I don't know if that comes off always the right way to every single person. Um, but I think when you're consistent each day and people realize you're a good coach, you eventually don't care about that style. You just respect that they're making you better each day and challenge you in that way to, and hopefully you look at it as that'll help your career. And sometimes, especially on your history, um, how people have coached you maybe in high school or college or before, sometimes that can shock some guys. But usually the guy, once he realizes that this person's real and why he's doing it, um, usually it's not a problem and JP has been great. Um, Ricky, if he were by you court to be unavailable for week one, regardless of the situation, how comfortable would you feel with Ricky potentially slotting in for him at the start of the season? I feel comfortable with whoever it is. I mean, that's just the issue as a coach. You always, I mean, there's times that I think Ayuk missed a game last year and we had to do that. So it's something you're always pre prepared for. Ayuk could also be with us and everything could be great and he could get hurt. Um, like has happened plenty of times. I mean, we lost a running back on a walk through the practice before our first game a few years ago with Jeb McKinnon and didn't have him for the whole year. So um, we had a quarterback who tore his ACL in week three um, one year. So uh, that's stuff that you're always used to and ready for. Have you mapped out how much you want the starters to play in the first preseason game and maybe what the quarterback rotation is going to be? Yeah, I talked about it with our staff yesterday when the players were off, but I haven't told any of the players yet. Um, so I'm not going to say it exactly here, but. We don't plan on many of the starters to play. Um, I know some guys will have to, but um, for the most part, um, starters shouldn't be in much, Kyle, if at all. Ross Dwight Clark did. Just curious of uh, maybe your first interaction or a fun story you have with Dwight over the years. Um, I just always remember Dwight at um, all the the um, camps up in Rockland when I was in middle school running around, and just I didn't realize how good of a player he was at that time because I was too young, and I just thought he was one of the coolest guys in the world. Just walking around like he was the man, like where everyone just respected him. I was like, why is that guy so special? And I remember my mom crushing me for not knowing what the catch was um, when I was in sixth grade. I didn't grow up here and didn't totally know from, I think I was two or one and a half at the time. So she should have been softer on me, but she wasn't. And um, she made me feel stupid. And now I get why, because it's one of the best plays ever. Now that you're experiencing a hold in for the first time, do you have any thoughts on whether you prefer that to a hold out? No, I mean, it's nice not having a, it's nice not finding guys, you know, so it's, but I mean, it's, there's not much of a difference. Um, so he has knee irritation. We're um, taking it easy on him, having him not punt here for a little bit and um, we'll have to figure out something for the game. Uh, as a coach, obviously you want, I assume you prefer just Brandon and I, you, is on the field and taking care of contractually. Obviously I know you don't ignore the financial part of it, but I, mean, I don't know how, how frustrating is it, you know, because I think, as you said, you're a better team when he's here. You don't, probably don't want him to not be here. I guess, what's the frustration level in your emotions as you've gone through this? Um, calculated and prepared. I mean, you want everybody out there. I'm frustrated guys are hurt and can't get out there. All you want to do is practice and get ready for the tough season that's ahead. But you also 
truly understand the business side of um, our league and what these guys do and put themselves through and what they have to go through um, in these deals. So whether it's a hold in or whether it's a hold out, I mean, this stuff is pretty common and you just got to be patient with it as a coach. All right, guys, thanks.